this electric scooter claims a top speed of 40 miles an hour and they say we can get 42 miles of range on a single charge. Okay, 40, one more. 40, can we get 41? Varla sent me this electric scooter over to review, so in today's video, we're gonna do that and we'll find out if this thing's a flaming piece of poop or if it's actually good. Current list price is about 1,700 bucks, but if you do decide you wanna buy this bike, you can save yourself about 100 bucks by buying through my link below this video using my discount code. But don't buy it just yet. We're gonna take it out on the 18 mile ride down by the beach. We'll run it up a 20% grade, then we'll also take it up an 85 foot hill. Along the way, we'll test the brakes, see how it rides, then we'll see what kind of range we actually get with a 200 pound dude on it. So let's get to it. If you do decide to buy this scooter, here's the box it'll come. Depending on your style, you can choose what kind of grip you wanna put on it, and you might find this sitting at the top of your box. And like most electric scooters, this thing comes basically fully assembled, not 100%. They say to keep your packaging for at least 15 days. It does not say anything about destroying the box. Very first impressions, I actually really like the blue color. And for those of you wondering how it works, this is the single piece that is preventing you from a trip to the hospital. I take that back, they actually give you a little bit of gear with this scooter. Personally love the look of the eagle and the sandpaper runs the entire width of the board. If you're not into the nature thing, you can do something a little more edgy. And here's what a size 14 shoe looks like on this board. Handlebars go here and they have a little rise and they also actually sweep back just a little bit. We get Varla branded hydraulic brakes. Lever looks super easy to grip with one finger. Grips are round and rubber. Throttle is on the right and the underside here. Control is on the left, but that's not gonna work till we put a display, which should be in this box. Indeed. Along with the display is the charger, which in this case is a two amp charger. 52 volts charge to max is 58.8. A 20.8 amp hour battery pack in there divided by a two amp charge rate. That puts you about 10 hours to charge from empty to full. Here's the light and maybe we'll need this, maybe we won't. It does run on a 52 volt, 20.8 amp hour battery pack, and it's got dual 1000 watt motors and dual 25 amp sine wave controllers. I thought those brake levers looked like zoom, and looking down here at the calipers, they are zoom calipers. One interesting thing about this scooter is the front brake rotor is on the right, and the back brake rotor is on the left. They are each 160 millimeters, and here's a look at the motor on the rear. 52 volt, 10 inch wheel, adjustable monoshock on the rear, and you get the same exact thing up here on front. Reflector, maybe turn signal, same back here, and Despite the scooter shipping with one charger, it does have dual charge ports. You can get a second charger and charge twice as fast. Of course, if you want to fold it up and bring it somewhere, it's as simple as dropping this latch here and then lifting the uh, 82 pound scooter. Recommended payload is 265 pounds, 330 pounds max. Here's what the tread looks like on the tubeless tires. And after you put the display on, here's what it looks like. You get a pair of NFC cards that'll unlock the display. For your reference, here's what a six foot five dude looks like on this thing. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. I can tell the deck is a little bit small for a size 14 shoe, but it'll work. Give this thing a try. To power it up, you press this button here, ask for the NFC, please work, and the screen turns right on. We get the battery percentage up here expressed in terms of a percentage and bars. There is a pedal assist one, and you have two, three, four, five. We get odometer, trip, voltage of the battery, which is always nice to see, 51.1. 51.1, I'd say that's a little lower than 57%, and that is the end of our options here. Headlight goes up here on front, looks like this bolt is for there. Mine is missing this part. When you turn the light on, it's pretty bright, and turning the headlight on does not appear to turn on these lights, but when you grab the brake lever, you can see it illuminates very lightly. So let's see if we can, oh, oh, oh. So let's see what happens if we give it some throttle. And it appears that under full throttle, on about half charge, the theoretical max speed would be 44 miles per hour, with absolutely no weight on the bike. But that's not how things work in the real world. We'll have to see how it does with a 200 pound dude riding a scooter. I have to say that the deck is a little bit smaller than I've seen on some other boards, which does keep the scooter a little more compact, but maybe not quite as much room for comfort. Suspension is bouncy. It's still plugged in, but let's take it for a ride. Oh, it actually works. I better get some air in those two boost tires. The street friendly tires call for 50 PSI. They ship with zero PSI. And it looks like the safety gear they give you is elbow pads, knee pads, and some wrist guards. To turn on the ambient lighting, you hold down the minus button for two seconds and it turns on these lights. To change the actual color, you just tap on this light button. You can switch between the ambient light modes. You turn it into a rave. There's a basic mode. This, uh, this multicolor mode is pretty chill or off. The choice is yours. All right, dudes, let's take the Varla Eagle One version two out for a ride. We'll bring this manual because there are two important settings in here I wanna try. Make sure we have that safety pin in there. Fire this thing up. 
fire the Strava up so we can see if we actually get 42 miles of range on this thing. And let's roll out. So you see this little yellow thing up there? That is the indicator that it is dual motor. There's a way to turn that off. We'll try it in a few. They say you should come to a complete stop before you turn on or off your motors. Of course, the very first test we're gonna do on the Varla Eagle 1 version 2 is the 20% hill grade test with a 200 pound dude. I have this on PAS pedal assist five. Let's go ahead and just ease on it here. It's on dual, mo dual motors. Um, that's full throttle right now. So we're making it, oh yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's powerful as expected. It's 3,200 watts. Let's see what it can do on dual motor here, starting from a stop on this hill. So, full throttle. Okay, yeah, it's pulling us up. Cool. So, it's not like really breaking traction. So popping out here on the sidewalk in the uh, bright light, first thing I'm noticing is I can see the display. It's a little bit, uh, on the dimmer side, let me go ahead and toggle these mirrors. Toggling the light button here, uh, see if that changes the brightness. Does not appear to be changing the brightness. So I can see it, but like just barely. Whew, we're about to get ran over already. Let me go ahead and throw on my polarized lenses and see if I can see the display. Uh, makes it a little more difficult, but you can see it. So on pedal assist one, uh, it tops us out at six miles an hour. Let's go ahead and just leave it smashed on <laughs> full throttle and press Okay, eases on the power and brings us up to 16 miles an hour. And on this scooter, compared to a lot of the other scooters I've reviewed so far, one thing I'm noticing is this has the throttle on the underside. So far, I think I actually prefer this because like it allows me to get a, a firm grip on the handlebars as compared to the ones where the throttle's like on top and you're pulling it with, you know, like your trigger finger. I find that like really kind of not that comfortable. A little bit of wind out here today. So let's see if we just slow it down here and I'll do full throttle. So it eases on the power on uh, pedal assist two. Let's put it on three, full throttle. So on three, the onboard is saying 21. GPS is reading 19 miles an hour. And first impressions, this is not like an intimidating scooter. This thing's actually pretty fast. Oh yeah, hear them brakes. Zip, 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 zip. So definitely it doesn't give you like all the power at once, which is appreciated. It makes this thing feel like rideable. Some of the cheap, the cheap garbage scooters that I ride, like they'll have a lag on the throttle and it'll just give you all the power at once, which makes it like almost unusable. This feels like very uh, safe and commuter, comfortable, newbie friendly. So here we are, PAS4 says I'm going 31 on the onboard screen. GPS reading 27. Brakes feel good, good brakes. Hydraulic disc brakes, you know, they're good. So far, I'd have to say it's, uh, you know, feels like a nice scooter. Feels, feels nice. Yeah, it, it does not feel like a flaming piece of poop. It feels uh, pretty, pretty polished so far. We got the walk light over there. This is not a red light I'm blowing. I'm just walking fast. Oh, so suspension kind of worked pretty good on those bumps I just ran over there. Ate them right up, did not bottom out. We got a nice little squishy, little springboard here. We'll go ahead and uh, bump that onto PAS5. Full throttle. Does that say five? It's hard to kind of read. Yeah, five. We'll get out here on the road. Uh, See what kind of speed we can get out of this thing. Starting from stop here on downhill. It's fast enough to get out here in traffic a little bit. Showing onboard is showing 38. Going into headwind about 36. According to GPS, I uh, definitely feel confident on this thing right away, right out of the box. Some scooters, you know, they don't really feel so like rideable as this one. This is a uh, very smooth, easy to operate. And throttle uh, gives you instant response. There's no lag on the throttle. So that's always a huge plus on some of these scooters when there's a uh, lag on the throttle. It just makes them like freaking unusable, dude. I am finding the board is a little bit short for me. So, you know, I, I would like to be able to kind of stretch my legs out a little bit more, but you know, I am six foot five and have long legs compared to most people. Overtaking the Escalade, no problem. Man, just out here whipping right away. Can we do a little lane space split? That car just decided to stop for some reason. So since it does ease on the power a little bit, the uh, zero to 20 speed might be a little bit slow, but uh, let's see what kind of launch it gives us here. Ready, go. So it gives you the power right away and just kind of ramps up 20. And 30 on the onboard. 32 on GPS. Pretty much as fast as uh, you probably need for a scooter, honestly. Have I been on faster scooters? 
Absolutely. Have I been on sketchy hair scooters? Absolutely. This thing, it, it feels uh, pretty polished, pretty refined. I like the grips on this, uh, the round rubber grips. Uh, sometimes, you know, I have had other scooters that have really poop <laughs> for grips. These are decent. All right, we're gonna whip this thing around, get a little bit of tailwind, see what kind of high speed we can hit. So full throttle, go. Definitely eases on the power in the beginning, makes it more rideable. Uh, 24, 30, 31, 34, 35, 36, 37, 39, 39, give me 40, give me 40, one more, 40, can we get 41, can we get a 41, not with a 200 pound body with this much surface area, uh, maybe if you weigh less. So a couple things about this scooter, one, the throttle, I'm noticing there's a pretty big dead spot in the beginning of it which is a little bit annoying just because you have to kind of like really extend your thumb and then there's like a lot of dead play now there are advantages to that i mean the the dead spot makes it so it's not so twitchy one other thing about this scooter is there's supposed to be cruise control where you hold the throttle in one steady speed for eight seconds and it's supposed to activate the cruise control i've been holding this thing for i don't know you tell me and when i let off the cruise control is not activating. So I don't know, maybe I need to get in the settings or something, but cruise control is not working for me out of the box. Other thing is you can hold down the plus button here for two seconds and it'll turn off this light and then it's only single motor. Let's see how that feels. Definitely quite a bit less powerful. Now in the comments, people have told me switching it to single motor does not increase your range. I guess it's more efficient just to run it on dual motor. Is that true? Also, you should not switch it uh, while you're riding. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. See what happens here. So this is back on and totally fine. Look at that thing. I actually like to know, is it running on front motor or back motor? I would like to believe it's rear wheel drive. Let's give it a try and see. Yeah, that's definitely rear wheel drive when you put it on one motor. You know, as I'm riding this thing, it kind of reminds me of a car with a turbocharger. By that I mean, you know, it's got power. I press the throttle, I feel the power, but you know, it kind of ramps on that power and you feel that turbo like spool up and it gives you more and more power as it builds power so it's like you don't get all the power right away but it does like it builds it builds and you feel it kick like it's that VTEC kicking in or something of course that's not how electric motors work though so that's like a feature that's built into it to just make it like a smoother ride but also help you get a little more range by not giving you huge bursts in power which speaking of range we are showing 71 percent right now so we know it's got the power let's run it up the california incline 85 foot climb 12 percent grade see what kind of speeds we can hit rolling into the loop-de-loop -loop here get a little bit of throttle around this corner full throttle well kind of on and off full throttle dang <laughs> very confidence inspiring scooter that looks familiar what what am i witnessing right here all right full throttle so i've noticed one thing about this all-wheel drive scooter the front wheel does not spin out on you which on some scooters that feels like pretty dangerous and uh sketchy when that front wheel spinning out so it's kind of nice being on an all-wheel drive scooter that's you know 26, we're catching the cyclist. 28, 30, I'm gonna chill it out. I don't wanna, don't wanna, you know. So again, that uh, turbocharger kind of feel to it. It just, the power increases and increases and increases. Beautiful day here in Los Santos. There we were, just down on the beach. We got a blimp out in the sky today too. Of course, we gotta see how fast it can go, going down the California incline. Oh my goodness, a little bit of headwind. This is ridiculous. 37, 38. It'd probably be a good time to make sure these hydraulic disc brakes are gonna bring us a stop. Oops. You're fine. You're totally fine. Oh, you just gotta be aware of uh, your environment when riding. So we'll give it a little brake test here from about 20 miles an hour. And, oh yeah, these brakes feel great, dude. They're. Very, uh, you know, hydraulic disc brakes, pretty confidence inspiring. They got big enough rotors. There is no regenerative braking on this thing though. Uh, suspension is harsh. <laughs> so two little complaints and one positive here. Start with the positive. The handlebars on this thing are like perfect. Perfect height for me, perfect width, perfect everything. Downside is on the brakes, despite them, I like the brakes a lot. The levers, uh, just where your finger kind of sits there, it doesn't fall like where it would naturally, you know, on the outer edge of that hook. It kind of puts my finger on the inner edge of the hook. I guess to compensate for that, you could like slide the whole lever in. Fisker Ocean. I thought this Fisker company like went out of business. The other downside though, is there is a little bit of wobble in this uh, steering. If you look right there, 
you can see there's oh you know what this thing just loosened up on me so i guess you gotta be careful to keep that thing tightened down so i guess it's a good thing there's a safety pin here for your grenade the grenade that is your 3200 watt scooter oh yeah there we go it's it's not wobbling anymore maybe i just didn't tighten it down enough so we are currently sitting at about 12 and a half miles 12.6 miles ride time hour and five minutes 61 percent on the battery bar let's head on home see what kind of range we get out of this but let me share my final thoughts on this scooter so i mean if you're looking for something that feels like stable going like 40 miles an hour and kind of like beginner friendly but high power also not extremely thrilling uh, this is definitely a safe option you know i feel really stable it feels fast it's not the biggest adrenaline rush i've ever had on the scooter and in general uh feels pretty high quality i love that there's no lag on the throttle brakes feel good uh just you know feels pretty solid all around so if you guys do want to grab one of these i do have a discount link down below this video in the description box if you did buy through that link it would help support my reviews here on juiced joy rides so let's head on home see what kind of range we end up getting see what it can do with battery down to about 55 percent please stop cars 35, 36, 37, passing the caddy. Woohoo! And the bumps. I just, I'm scared of potholes going this fast. See if we can merge over and make this light. Come on, baby. No, 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 no. All right. This is what having a scooter is all about. All right, dude, just made it back home. Almost 19 miles an hour and 30 minutes of ride time. I was whipping out there, showing 53% left on the battery. So I'd say, you know, you could probably genuinely do 42 miles on this thing. If you do want to grab one, buy through the link below this video in the description box. However, this is not your cup of tea. You can watch this video next. Thanks for watching, dudes. Catch you next time. Oh, and the battery voltage is 50.5 volts for 54%.